We provide a three course vegetarian meal for up to around 60 clients per two, two sessions a week, Mondays and Wednesdays. Uh, most of the clients are they're vulnerably housed at, at the best, um, but many of them sleep in parks and sleep in cemeteries and sleep in derelict factories. Um, you know, in the cemetery round the back, we've got a couple of clients sleeping there, which is it's not so bad in the summer months. But last last winter, it was really dire. It was a very cold winter, and, and clients die. You know, so some of our clients, we we lost one last. Last summer, we lost two in the winter. Um, so it, it's it's no fun, and they're not just after, they're not just people after freebies. You know, they they actually really need food and advice and shelter. And we try and help them as much as possible, but we've just lost our funding that from the local authority. We don't get any money from Hackney anymore for our welfare advice worker. Um, so we try and give advice as best we can, but we haven't got a qualified advice worker anymore. But we do, we do provide a space for other organisations and agencies to come um, and sort of piggyback on, on the back of us. We've got um, a TB worker from the local hospital, tuberculosis. The popular perception that TB has gone away, and in fact that's far from the actual truth, um, anybody can get TB and in inner city areas it can be quite a problem. The drop-in is particularly important because some people are much more vulnerable and susceptible to getting TB than others and this is quite often can be to do with your lifestyle. If you're homeless, you're on the streets, you haven't got a good diet and you're perhaps sleeping in squats with lots of other people or in poorly ventilated areas or sharing paraphernalia with people, then you are much more likely to get TB. What we're trying to do is to intervene early uh, with groups such as these sort of invisible, hard to reach homeless groups and screen them so that we can actually find out who has got TB, how widespread TB is and get them into treatment as soon as possible. And we've got um, yeah, a mobile x-ray unit comes around because a lot of people have chest problems because they're sleeping out, you know, it's difficult for them. Um, got a chiropodist, a barber, um, health visitor, so it's, it's a useful space for, for people to come and, and you know, they, they can sort of capture up to 50 or 60 people at a time, so they can do a lot of good in a short space of time. So we've managed to develop a really good relationship with North London Action on Homelessness, and we've been coming for a few years now. At one point we carried out a massive screening, particularly amongst the Eastern European users, um, because of concerns about their physical um, health and that was very useful for us. First of all, we could identify who had active disease, but we'd also see how many people had what we call latent disease, sort of dormant in them, but not yet active. It's run almost entirely by volunteers. I mean, I'm the manager and the chef is paid as well, but everybody else gives their, their time for free. And most of them have got jobs. You know, they work very hard during the day and they come here in the evening and work really, really hard here for three or four hours. Um, so we rely on them a lot um, and that's that's the time people give and the other way we keep going is the money people give and we get so we, we do rely on voluntary contributions from people don't get any state funding at all we've got an A10 uh, Eastern European outreach worker English classes for our Eastern European clients so there's a lot going on it's, it's not just food they have to have money first when they come here. If they don't start working as soon as they come here, they're spending all their monies and they, they, get, they end up in the streets as, as homeless people. So once they're in the streets, it's very difficult to get back, to go for appointments, for job appointments, to go for interviews. It's very difficult to get from the doorways where they're sleeping to get into interviews. It's difficult because uh, of the language barrier, of course. And this is why I have to phone for them everywhere. Some of them are going to English courses, but majority are not. Because the distances are very big here in London and you cannot afford to travel. Being homeless, you cannot, you cannot 
have control over your, your things. People are losing the passports or the IDs, the documents. We try to re help them to replace them. We go with them to the embassies. We have a we work through a scheme that uh, provides them with passport for free. We have a small laptop. We provide them with we have a telephone, a small telephone that everybody uses, and uh, they can use our address, our center as an address. Their mail their letters come on this address. I accompany them to all their appointments. We we provide them with. Uh, bus tickets because they don't well, they cannot afford to buy any bus tickets having no money uh, I book appointments for them whenever whenever they need to go like job centers uh, I don't other organizations specialized organizations like crisis for example last week we have we had a Polish gentleman a very good gardener we find a job for him I took him for an interview, I translated for him, pleased to say that he got the job. Uh, I tell clients about their rights in the UK, um, I also refer Polish clients to other centers for homeless people, like Delo Center or Crisis or Mana Center. I refer them to AA meetings if they are interested. We also have English uh, language session after the uh, dinner. I try to teach some uh, basic English to our clients, Polish ma mainly, and it helps clients to to get the confidence up. I do a lot of things with translating. I translate between um, Polish clients and uh, war uh, drug and alcohol worker. Um, also, I try to translate some official letters for clients or I'm trying to help them to fill in some forms or understand the letters they, they, they get like from bank or from Inland Revenue. They come here mainly for the food and the advice and the clothes. But um, there's another really important thing is, is that they, they get a lot of respect from us. My very first day when I I had I, I'd lost my job and, and life was a bit rubbish and I was skint and for the very first time in my life I had to go to a charity handout and I can vividly remember that very first day but when you go inside you're straight away everybody treats you with basic courtesy basic respect the tables laid it's, it's like you you come inside and you sit down and you know somebody waits on you and that's just fantastic and that to me that is, is representative of so much that they do at this place that's that's right and and it treats the people who its users very very well without exception this charity has been established in this little part of north london it's got loads of links um with other local groups um they they receive donations for food they're in touch with other other church groups and stuff and they they've maintain that kind of relationship with their geographical area through hard work over a considerable period of time. Um, and I think that sets them apart from a lot of other providers of charity. I mean, they're plugged into um, like the health service. We get loads of um, stuff around jabs and, and medical care. We, you know, there's, and uh, stuff around substance abuse. Though these, these people from the health service are quite happy to come to sessions here so that kind of thing takes place it's done me personally a lot of good they I now am involved I sit on their committee and chip in with my two penneth from time to time I've become involved in training some of the volunteers I um, I've done some of the interviewing and stuff and it, none of those things you know that they've all come about through the care and the attention this place has given me through um, one of the managers here I managed to get myself to college on two occasions and get um, city and guilds that I wouldn't have done if I had been left to my own devices and you know it was all pretty much sorted out for me. Yeah, All, all the food that we use we, we, we get the raw ingredients from local shops um, Whole Foods in Stoke Newton give us a lot of food and the Spence which is the local bakery give us all our bread free 
Um, so we do rely. We, we, we don't spend an awful lot of money on food because we get fantastic food given to us by the local community. In fact, we're supported really well by the local community. So we've got no problem with food. We have got a problem with funding because we, we're just constantly filling in applications, funding applications, and we're only really a few months away ever from, from closure.